Whenever a popular new product from a renowned or trendy brand comes on the market, Chinese netizens joke, "Now the pressure is on Yiwu." Yiwu, a county-level city in Zhejiang Province, is home to the world's largest small commodities wholesale market and is aptly dubbed the capital of small commodities. However, it is also notorious as a hotbed for counterfeit and pirated goods. The phrase "pressure on Yiwu" implies that as soon as a product becomes a hit in the market, factories in Yiwu will swiftly replicate it, producing imitation goods. These counterfeit items range from cosmetics, apparel, bags, shoes, toys, sports equipment to daily necessities. How fast can Yiwu copy products? Let's hear it from the industry insider. How fast can Yiwu's market respond? When a product becomes a trend or is about to, within just five minutes, suppliers here can source an identical item. If not available, they'll create a mold within a day and produce a sample in about two days. It's all about speed in this game. Early birds get the biggest piece, while latecomers get the leftovers. For instance, a posture-correcting yoga stick recently became popular. Initially, only one or two vendors offered it, but within a week, it was available at nearly every stall. This speed is the power of Yiwu's supply chain. Of course, what he portrays as Yiwu's efficient supply chain is, in reality, the production of counterfeit goods. The quality of these replicas vary. High-quality imitations, hard to differentiate from the real thing, are priced higher. Others are evidently fake but remain popular due to their affordability and trendy designs. Another prevalent practice involves slightly modifying best-selling products. Attaching an international brand name and logo resembling the original, and pricing it at a fraction of the genuine article's cost. This has become a dominant strategy for many Yiwu merchants. Yiwu's counterfeit legacy is infamous. Back in 2004, CBS aired a segment titled "World's Largest Counterfeit Market." In it, a sports shoe vendor boasted that they could replicate the latest Nike sneakers within four days. Costing only four dollars a pair. The segment also noted that a three thousand dollar Callaway golf club could be purchased for a mere two hundred and seventy five dollars. CBS revealed a cozy relationship between police and counterfeiters, likening crackdowns to a cat and mouse game. They quoted Professor Daniel Chow from Ohio State University, a longtime researcher on intellectual property rights infringement. Local insiders told him that 90% of the merchandise in Yiwu's market was counterfeit. Given the market is invested in by the local commerce department and forms an economic pillar contributing to local tax revenues and administrative fees, it's no surprise some officials even hold stakes. Perhaps this is the root cause of Yiwu's counterfeit epidemic. The CBS report didn't halt Yiwu's counterfeit operations. With nearly two decades of practice, Yiwu's counterfeiting skills have become sophisticated and modernized. Due to the plethora of counterfeit luxury goods in China, many consumers have turned to overseas purchasing agents. Surprisingly, even these agents can't always escape the counterfeit trap. When you receive a luxury bag purportedly sourced from Europe or the U.S., Everything from the product packaging and receipt to the shipping label could be fake. According to mainland Chinese media, the influx of high-quality counterfeit luxury goods has given rise to a booming counterfeit personal shopping industry. These faux personal shoppers buy top-tier counterfeit luxury goods at a fraction of the genuine item's price, then sell them for just a bit less than the original's retail value, garnering massive profits. The modus operandi involves furnishing fake receipts and fabricated shipping details, making it seem as though the items were genuinely procured from abroad. Reports suggest that burgeoning demand for luxury brands and their associated allure has fostered the maturity of this counterfeit industry, with Yiwu likely serving as a hub for these operations. Owing to stringent brand regulations, such counterfeit operations are often covert and not scaled extensively. Most products in Yiwu's trade city closely resemble luxury goods, bearing slightly altered brand logos, indicative of a counterfeit. 
Of course, in addition to these replicas, Yiwu also boasts its range of original branded products. Their quality varies, but given their affordable prices, they've secured a significant market share. A popular saying goes, anything in the world can be found in Yiwu, and often cheaper. While this might be an overstatement, it underscores Yiwu's stature as the world's commodity capital. Current statistics reveal that Yiwu's trade city encompasses over 70,000 stalls, managing over 33,000 categories and 1.7 million individual products. Famed for its knockoffs are Zhejiang-based online platform Taobao and its parent company Alibaba. A majority of commodities on Taobao are sourced from Yiwu. Reportedly, this city accounts for a staggering 11% of the nation's total parcel dispatch. Beyond domestic sales, the majority of Yiwu's trade pertains to exports. Notably, many dollar stores worldwide source their low-cost toys and daily use items from Yiwu. However, like other Chinese trade-centric cities, Yiwu's exporters have noticed a sudden decline in traditional orders from Europe and America this year. In contrast, there's been a surge in orders from Africa, Latin America, and countries along China's Belt and Road Initiative. Data indicates that in 2022, Yiwu's exports to Africa grew by 7%, accounting for 18.7% of its total exports. Between January and July of this year, Yiwu's imports and exports to Africa totaled 592 billion yuan, marking a 31.6% increase. Meanwhile, trade with Latin America reached 494.2 billion yuan, growing by 32.7%. Additionally, trade with India and Saudi Arabia reached 153.9 billion yuan and 80.6 billion yuan, respectively, growing by 11.3 and 54.6%. Trade with Belt and Road partner nations totaled almost 1.2 trillion yuan up by 18.9%. During this period, EU's exports to Europe and the US continued to decline. The ongoing Asian games in Hangzhou, Zhejiang, have further boosted EU's commodities, drawing substantial orders from Southeast Asia, Middle East, and other Asian countries. In an intriguing development, Zhejiang is also the province where Xi Jinping, the leader of the CCP, once served. Recently, apart from attending the opening ceremony of the Asian Games in Hangzhou, Xi Jinping also made an inspection visit to Yiwu. Zhejiang's official media highlighted that during a 2006 research visit to Yiwu, Xi Jinping had summarized the city's developmental experience in 12 characters, translating to inexplicable, creating out of nothing, and turning stone into gold. The report further credited this Yiwu development experience as coined by Xi Jinping for propelling Yiwu's industrial growth. The approach of attracting big businesses and strengthening existing ones seemed to be a contemporary legend of Yiwu's creating out of nothing. At face value, the term inexplicable might suggest Xi Jinping's own perplexity towards Yiwu's growth, predominantly driven by counterfeiting. Terms like creating out of nothing and turning stone into gold seem to underscore Yiwu's reliance on counterfeiting for wealth accumulation. Could this be Xi Jinping's genuine sentiment? Regardless, relying on such a developmental model has undoubtedly facilitated rapid prosperity for Yiwu's populace. In 2021, the per capita disposable income of urban residents in Yiwu exceeded 86,000 yuan around 12,000 US dollars, ranking first nationwide, even surpassing megacities like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen. Yiwu is also home to numerous family workshops. The city's swift counterfeiting capability and prompt market introduction can be attributed to this flexible home-based production model. Most of Yiwu's factories are dubbed three-in-one factories, amalgamating warehouses, manufacturing units, and residences. A seemingly ordinary residential building might just be a small factory, often referred to by many e-commerce entrepreneurs as the primary source of goods or source factories.
If you guys are looking for primary sources in Iwu, don't just head to the trade city. Instead, look for these factories that handle everything from production to finishing. This is a sun protective clothing processing factory. Their scale is surprisingly extensive. The owner was amiable and mentioned that they handle both online and offline wholesale. They also offer drop shipping for e-commerce platforms. Here are the finished products, set to be dispatched this afternoon. Over there, workers are sewing the clothing pieces. They're especially busy now because of the high demand for such seasonal products. Here we have a jewelry production factory. In the video, a few workers can be seen laboring in a rather basic workshop, with raw materials and finished products scattered all over. The colorful jewelry components on the assembly table are dazzling. We followed the owner to the sample room, where the jewelry, under the glow of lights, shimmered brilliantly. One might never imagine that such seemingly upscale jewelry originates from such a humble handcraft workshop. Next, we visited a sock processing factory. The owner shared that they've been in the sock business for 20 years. The workshop is filled with machinery, suggesting a substantial operation. Their sample room showcased an array of socks. The owner mentioned they don't actively sell, they only process orders, earning a modest processing fee. Their primary clientele consists of long-standing customers. It's plausible that brands like Nike and Adidas might also have their products coming from here. Another establishment showcased is a small leather bag workshop, which too has the hallmarks of a family-run operation. How do you feel after watching these videos? Such home-based production models indeed benefit from low-cost, rapid adaptability, and short production cycles. The absence of regulation might be another factor. Perhaps these attributes are the secret behind Yiwu's success. Yiwu's merchandise has become wildly popular not only in China but globally. This success can largely be attributed to their low-cost counterfeits and dumping of products at extremely low prices. And, not to forget, a lot of cunning tactics and deceit. Today, the internet is awash with videos showcasing Yiwu products sold by weight. Take a look. This is the store. All these accessories are sold by weight. In this entire area, everything, like these and these popular ones for girls, all kinds of colors and styles, guess the price? Only 20 yuan per kilogram. Let's try some now. 20 yuan a kilogram. Starting with this string of 100, which weighs 0.4 kilograms, still not enough. How much would you usually pay for these in accessory stores? Adding more to reach 0.5 kilograms. This is what you get for 20 yuan? How many in total? 100, 200, 25, or 215 in all. Just for 20 yuan or 2.8 US dollars. Not just accessories, even toys are available for purchase by weight. Toys in the store are priced at 18 yuan per kilogram, roughly $2.5 for 500 grams. The video displays a range of items from basic electronic toy cars to advanced drones for aerial photography. According to the store owner, many toy stores source their products from him, attracting customers from all over the world. However, with such cheap prices, quality assurance remains doubtful. Surprisingly, even water bottles are sold by weight. The seller claims each kilogram costs 7 yuan, less than $1 for 500 grams. The host weighed one, finding it to be 382 grams, priced at 5.34 yuan or approximately 74 cents. Other products sold by weight include clothes, cosmetics, and more. The incredibly low prices of Yiwu's goods are indeed astonishing. However, some users on Zhihu, a Chinese Q&A platform, have expressed skepticism. They claim that many products sold by weight involve deceptive tactics. Most of these goods are either leftover stock or stored inventory, akin to sale items, with questionable quality. Numerous users have shared their experiences of being duped by toys sold by weight in Yiwu. Many internet celebrities might exaggerate for views, or might even be sponsored by store owners, leading to potential misrepresentations. One particular broadcaster sheds light on the deceptive practices of selling goods by weight in Yiwu. 
Despite the general perception of Yi Wu's goods being incredibly cheap due to being sold by weight, there's more to the story. In many cases, the products are weighed along with the packaging boxes, and they usually provide large boxes. Eventually, you'll find that for goods worth 1,000 yuan, the cardboard box alone accounts for over 100 yuan. Additionally, many products sold by weight are leftover stock, rarely available in complete sets with all sizes. Imperfections are common, and exchanges for defective items are usually not permitted. Therefore, when sourcing products, it's essential to thoroughly inspect the goods and even unpackage individual items for close examination. Yi Wu, known as the world's largest wholesale market for small commodities, poses a threat not only to Chinese consumers, but also to international markets. Due to the rampant counterfeit goods, Yi Wu's international trade city has repeatedly been listed on the notorious markets list by the U.S. Trade Representative Office, USTR. Statistics indicate that China remains the primary source of counterfeit goods entering the U.S., with Chinese knockoffs accounting for a staggering 92% based on import value. Counterfeiting and piracy not only harm the intellectual property and economic interests of genuine product manufacturers, but also deceive consumers. The prevalence of this counterfeit industry ties back to the tacit approval and leniency of the CCP, with some officials even participating in these activities. Additionally, Chinese laws offer minimal penalties for such fraudulent actions. Typically, offenders face mere fines and, after paying, may resume their illicit activities. Such lenient penalties indirectly encourage the counterfeit industry, luring many to take risks for substantial profits. Eradicating counterfeiting in China is a monumental challenge, akin to an impossible task. The title of counterfeit capital attached to Yi Wu might only be shed once the corrupt 